What's up guys? Today we're going to do a quick little video on one of my favorite spring swim jigs. This is the Mega Bass Waze Swimmer. Now we've talked about it before, just want to revisit it, make sure you guys are familiar with this guy. So if you got a few minutes, you want to talk about this dope bait, let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The hookup tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, Tackle Otaku on Instagram being joined by my buddy at Desert Bass and CJ, what's up? What's up? So today we're gonna break down one of my favorite swim jigs for the spring and that's the Mega Bass Waze Swimmer. Now this has been out on the market for a couple of years. I know most of you probably have this incorporated into your lineup, but swim jigs are one of those things that for many of you, it's just standard fare, right? You throw a swim jig all the time. But for a lot of you, a swim jig is still kind of a relatively unknown item. And we get tons of questions on which swim jig do I do? What weight do I do? And so uh, this is just one of those baits. It's just kind of, it's a very special bait. It's really designed to go with a paddle tail swim bait. It has an underspin on it. Uh, and it comes in all kinds of sizes from 3 16 to 3 quarters. So you could really accomplish a lot of things. So. We're gonna break this down really quickly. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm using it, what we're doing, the rod, the reel, the line, all that kind of stuff so that you guys could incorporate this into your spring fishing. And you know, what's great about this too is that they do make some heavier sizes. So I have the 5'8 size in my hand, which is usually my go-to size uh, for just kind of running bank, but they also go up to a three quarter ounce, which is great for more deeper structure, fishing some of the deeper channels for pre-spawn and post-spawn and even into summer time fishing ledges and breaks and flats and all that kind of stuff as well. So let's break this down very quickly. Let me take this out of the package and I will show you guys what we got going here. So let's first off talk about the sizes. So there are three, four, five, six total sizes in this guy. So they start at 3 16ths of an ounce. So the 3 16ths of an ounce is a really small one that's designed to fit a three inch base, like a little three inch spark shad, something like that. That's gonna be a real finesse one that works great as a Okashira screw head alternative, right? Real small, real compact. The standard sizes in it are quarter, three eighths and half, okay? And this is what you guys will probably end up throwing the majority of time. These are designed for throwing a four inch bait. And then there's two bigger sizes. There's a five eighths and a three quarter. And those are designed for throwing a five inch bait. So a lot of this is just gonna come down to size. As they get bigger, they get just a longer shank hook, right, to accommodate the bigger bait. But here, let's just break this down very quickly and show you guys exactly what we're doing. So this is the Waze Swimmer. Now they're all gonna look like that just a little bit different shank hook depending on the size, okay? They have this triangular shaped head, which is great for tracking the swim bait true. It has a titanium wire with a willow leaf blade on there. It has a real stout uh, kind of cutting point, kind of nano, -cut it, nano coated hook. It has, you know, dual hand tied uh, bait keepers on there and a light little brush guard. Now. What I can tell you about this is if you guys are fishing around a lot of weeds, around a lot of grass, aquatic vegetation, this is an amazing one for kind of ripping out of grass and coming back through. It'll rip out of grass the same way that a lipless or something like that would very, very well. If you guys are fishing around a lot of wood, now we have a lot of wood out here, this is a magnet for wood. One thing that Mega Bass does really well, and Griff kind of put it to me the best like this, is Mega Bass has an amazing way of rolling. Right, so no matter what the bait, they love their baits to hit something and then kind of roll and deflect off. 
Unfortunately, what happens with this guy is if you're dragging it up and over wood, this titanium blade will hit and it causes the bait to kind of roll. And because this is just kind of a little wimpy weed guard there, it loves to snag in branches. So this is not a great option for wood. So if you guys are fishing a lot of, you know, I don't know, just stumps, bigger wood where you're kind of pulling your swim jig up and through the branches, you're gonna to wanna to go with more of a traditional swim jig, something like a dirty jigs or an OSP slipper jig or something like that. But if you're fishing open water, which is how we fish a lot in the spring, or around grass, around toolies, that kind of stuff, this is an amazing one because the blade is great in open water for giving a little bit of extra flash and vibration. And the head design is great for ripping out of grass if you guys get it in, okay? Now, first thing I do always with uh, the Waze Swimmer is no matter what the size is, I trim the skirt. So they're all gonna come relatively long, okay? And one thing that I find helps a lot with these swim jigs is if you trim that skirt basically right at that hook bend right there what it does is it allows the bait to track much truer so after you put the swim bait on here if you're slightly off centered because there's not the big bulk of that jig skirt there it will track perfectly straight sometimes if you leave all the strands on there particularly more in the lighter size. So as you start getting down to three eighths and the quarter and really specifically in the three sixteens, they will not run true if that swim bait isn't lined up perfectly straight on the hook, okay? But I've just gotten such a habit with it. I like to trim it no matter what the size. So let's talk about trailers really quick. <clears throat> We'll talk about trailers and colors. So there's, I think, eight or nine different colors that come in the Waze. Uh, anywhere from like a black blue, there's a couple of bluegills like Griffon and actual bluegill, there's a golden shiner. Uh, there's several different shad colors, sexy shad, chartreuse and white. So obviously a lot of this is gonna come down to your waters and what you need, right? If you're fishing really muddy water, you may need something like chartreuse and white or black and blue, right? Out here, how we're fishing, it's predominantly clear water, clear to slightly stained, I would say, right? So for us, it's usually more of shad patterns or bluegill patterns is really where we kind of live. So for me, the main colors are smoke shad, which is what I have here. I find that smoke shad matches any of the whiter tones great. So when they really start keying in on shad, this is a great option. I'll go with the hasu, which is more of just a, kind of a clearish little blue flake uh, option when I need something a little bit chiller, a little bit better profile. And then I will use the Golden Shiner a lot. I love the Golden Shiner as a bluegill profile. Now, of course, you could go with the bluegill or you could go with the grape on. But I like the Golden Shiner because it's one of only two colors that has that gold blade, and I'm a sucker for gold blades. I find that you can utilize this color and just put, you know, green pumpkin or something more subdued, and it looks just like a bluegill coming through the water but you get advantage of that gold blade, okay? Now, for these larger sizes, for the 5 8 and the 3 quarter, these are designed to fit a 5 inch spark shad, okay? So the Waze and spark shad, this was, these were designed for each other, you could say, right? So I will almost always throw the 5 inch spark shad, of course you could throw a, you know, a 4 8 K-Tech here as well, right? But the other one that I will throw a lot is the 4.5 OSP Doe Live Shad. So these are the two for me that almost always go on this. I'll go with the K-Tick if I really just need a real wide paddle kick, which is almost never anymore. I find that I'll go with the Spark Shad when I want it to be really, really subtle and just have a real tight movement. And I'll go with the Doe Live Shad when I want just a little bit more life out of my swim. It creates a little bit of a rock as well. I'll rig this up for you guys and let you guys see what this does. All right, so, you know, this is pretty straightforward, simple, right? There is, I mean, this isn't rocket science. You guys have done this a gazillion times. You're just gonna roll this through. You just wanna make sure that with a swim jig, you try to go as absolute straight as you can on that bait. Now, almost all these baits are gonna have some kind of pilot hole system on the back, right? To make sure that hook point is coming out exactly where you need it to. You're just gonna push it up and over this dual bait keeper right there. 
and that's going to hold it in place. Okay, and there you have it. So you just want to make sure it's as straight as possible. This is just a great deadly combination. If you guys need a little extra color, you could always tip the tail on chartreuse or put a dot on it, but pretty much I roll like this. So smoke shad and any type of white color, either the he uh, in the spark shad um, or you know the white on the doe live shad, that's kind of my go-to. I like 5 eighths when I'm running bank because I can fish it really quick. Uh, this is a bait I can cover a lot of water with. I can get away with a larger profile. So this time of the year when the fish are looking for a larger bait, when they are you know feeding on big full-size shad, the 5.8 is a great one. Now, if it's just a little bit too big, then I'll downsize into a half, uh, a 3.8 or a quarter. Now, here's what I will tell you. The half makes a great open water size. Okay, so if you need to get that bait down, I don't know, three to eight foot and move it at a decent clip, then go with the half ounce. If you need to keep it real high in the column or go incredibly slow, then go with the 3 8 or the quarter ounce. Remember that even though these will track true to a certain extent, they are going to have a sweet speed still. So there's going to be a magical speed that everything works perfectly straight. If you go too fast, they will have a tendency to go on the side and you don't want that. Right? So the heavier you go, the faster you can move the bait. And that's really the way I choose them, right? If you just need it to be extremely shallow, like inches of water, then go with the quarter ounce, right? Because you can keep it real high. But most of the world, when we fish a swim jig, we at least have a few feet of water depth to deal with before it lands on bottom or lands on grass or whatever. So it really comes down to speed. If you want it to move quick, go with the half ounce. If you want it to move slowly, you can go with the three eighths or the quarter, right? So. Same thing on these guys, right? I'll take out a half ounce just so you guys can see it. It's such a dope looking bait in the water. It's got the trailer and the little flash underneath. It looks so good. It's such a great bait. Now, early on when this bait first came out, uh, you know, Mega Bass did have an issue with the titanium wire, right? The way they poured the lead in the wire. I don't know if it got too hot or something happened, but the wires were snapping relatively easy. You know, we've been throwing these things for the last year or so pretty rough and you very rarely have any kind of wire issues now. Now, again, it is dangling from the bait and it is wire. You can only bend it so many times even though it's titanium. So, you know, if you're snagging it in rocks or you're snagging it in stuff, or you're catching a bunch of fish and this thing is flexing, eventually it's gonna break on you, right? But even without the wire, and I know a lot of people that just cut the wire off just so they could have the swim jig, it's still an amazing swim jig, okay? So <clears throat> here's the half ounce. Again, we're gonna start by doing the same thing. I want to trim that skirt. Okay, and again, I basically just go right to the bend of that hook. Okay, so it's about an inch or so, three quarters of an inch to an inch. That way, when I let go, it kind of just kind of fluffs all around that skirt. Now, this is the Hasu color. This is a real nice, natural uh, bait fish pattern. <clears throat> For me, the Hasu looks great. You could use the same white colors again. Um, but I like the albino or the neon pepper. It's just something with a little bit of a blue hue, or again, in the Dole Life Shad, I'll just go with the Sight Flash, right, which is their white. So this is just a great addition to that as well if I want to make it have a little bit more body. Or here, we'll put a Spark Shad on this one just so we can see the difference here. <clears throat> and then same thing, right? So we're going to put it in the head, and we're going to just make sure that it's lined up perfectly straight, and again, it's gonna have some pilot holes in the back back there. Just make sure it lines up straight. I'm just gonna push it up and over that keeper. And there you go. All right, and then you've got everything perfectly straight and ready to go. Now, a lot of people are bothered by eyes. I've never really understood it, right? So if the four eyes buggy, you, you can always just pop those eyes out of that bait. I don't care. I mean, I don't think a bass would ever care that there's an eye there. I think it just thinks it's a shad dot or something else. There's skirt covering it anyways, right? But this is just a highly, highly deadly combo. Now, the other thing I will use every once in a while is a trailer is the Hazardong Shad. I would say probably for me, <clears throat> I'd say probably 45% of the time I use the Spark Shad, 45% of the time I use the Dole Life Shad, and it's just based on action. Spark Shad 
when I just need something a little more subtle and tighter. Dull Life Shad when I want a little bit more rock to it. I'll roll with the Hazardong Shad maybe about 10% of the time, maybe not even that high, when I need something just super tight. So think of this as going to a flat side crankbait over a you know wide wobbling crankbait, essentially, right? So this is another good option that fits the quarter, three eighths and half ounce size as well. This is the 4.2 inch Hazadong. It's just really tight and just changes up the action on it. And of course you guys can go crazy with trailers. You can put a crawl trailer on here. Uh, you can put any traditional swim jig trailer will fit on this. I just am a sucker for some kind of paddle tail. It's what it's designed for. I have a lot of success with it. So that's generally where I stay. Now, the other color they use a lot is the Golden Shiner. And again, we talked about this being kind of like my uh, bluegill type color. If you guys live places where they eat Golden Shiners, you can throw an IU on the back of this. It looks just like one. I usually roll with some kind of green pumpkin in that combination of the kind of goldish orange in the skirt and the green pumpkin in the back is great. The other color that works great on here in the OSP Dole Life Shad is the Green Pumpkin Shad. I love the way that looks, just super, super natural. So that's another great option for you. As far as fishing these things go, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. The bait is designed to really do all the work for you, just kind of cast and wind. So, you know, once it's in the water, as long as that bait is, you know, kicking in the back and that blade is spinning, it's doing pretty much everything it can do. So now it's up to you to just kind of pick your angles, to pick the right cast, to pick the right lane, to make sure that you've made the cast where the bait's gonna come across the fish or across the grass or through the weeds or whatever it is that you're fishing the way you want it to. Uh, sometimes it's good to kind of get it in stuff to kind of rip it out and tear it or bounce it up and down. Again, as long as it's not wood, it works great, right? If it's wood, you're fucked. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's really just a straightforward retrieve. I have two rods that I use this thing on. Uh, the rod that I have been using it on uh, for the last, I guess, year or so since we've had these is the Daiwa Steez AGS 7.2 Heavy. This is the power pitch. I find that I use this rod for almost everything I do in shallow water, but the rod that we've been throwing it on recently is a rod that we just started adding into our lineup, and this is the 904C MBR. So this is the NRX Plus from G. Loomis. I love this rod. It does everything so well. Virtually, these two rods can do almost everything. Why I would choose one over the other, if I'm close range and I wanna make more roll cast or super accurate cast, I'm gonna go with the Steez. It's 7.2, it's just a beautifully accurate rod. If it's more open water and I'm throwing across a big flat uh, or just you know running down bank, making a long cast through weed beds, something that maybe I need a little extra rod to rip out of grass, then I'm gonna go with the NRX because it's seven six. It just gives me a little bit more rod. Either way, I find a seven to one gear ratio is perfect for a swim jig. It lets me go fast enough. It lets me wind down and pick up line when they hit from a far ways out, but it's slow enough to where I'm not concerned with myself going too fast in that bait kind of drifting on the side. For me, it's almost always 20 pound. That's kind of the magic number for me, 20 pound straight fluoro. I will do braid if it's just gnarly, gnarly grass and weeds and that kind of stuff. But I try to stay away from braid with a swim jig. It's just, it's how I've always fished it. I love the feeling of fluoro. I'm just used to my rod and a fluoro, but there's no right or wrong here. So if braid works better for you, that's great. I just find that the fluoro gets me the bites. I have a lot of confidence in it, so I stay there. So 20 pounds, kind of the magic number. If you're fishing really, really gnarly stuff, maybe bump up to 22. If you're fishing more lighter duty stuff, you could drop down to 18 or 16, something like that. I probably wouldn't go below 16 because then you're gonna really not have enough power to drive the hook home. So even though it's semi-exposed, it's still a pretty big hook. So you wanna have a powerful rod to drive this thing in, right? So again, as far as the retrieve, you know, traditionally with swim jigs, <clears throat> this is something that we're throwing out and then we're kind of using the rod to give the bait some motion or some lift or some side to side movement, right? With the Waze, because it's built the way it is with the swimmer uh, or with the head, the way it's, it's pointed, the way it flares out on the gills, the way it has that blade, it's gonna have all that action kind of built into it. So really this is something that we can just kind of throw out, let kind of sink to the depth, and then literally just kind of keep the rod at a slight angle. I'm never pointed straight at the jig, 
always slightly off center, right? Maybe a 15 to 30% kind of angle. And then it's just a straight retrieve, depending on how fast or slow I need to go, which, you know, the water depth and the fish behavior will tell me that. I think that's everything, right? Yeah, nailed it. Everything uh, you need to know. This and I'll wrap it up. Waze 101. Waze 101. All right, guys. So that is a wrap. There is a little insight, a little quick insight into one of my favorite swim jigs. Definitely one that if you guys don't have it in your arsenal yet, you should add it. The, again, there's tons of sizes. There's tons of baits that can go on them. But if you take what we just talked about and you implement it, you will catch fish immediately with this bait. It's just a really, really awesome fish catcher. So if you have any questions, holler me, drop it down below in the comments. I will definitely get to it. CJ will leave links to the base. So if you want to check them out closer, you certainly can. And guys, until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the business. And we will see you soon. Go catch some Waze fish. All right. Peace guys.